That's it. I'm making a tutorial of how to paint Reduka the roof without an airbrush. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel, collectors. Thank you guys so much for the resounding support for all our Curse City videos thus far. I'm so happy that you all find these videos useful and you can apply them to many other models. So when I painted all these miniatures, many of you have asked, can I do this without an airbrush? And the answer is, yes, you can. But however, do be warned, it does take significantly more time and more skill to do this. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys some tips and tricks of how you can overcome these challenges so that you become a better miniature painter yourself. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. So you have been warned, are you ready? Let's go! So to begin this, you're going to need these colors right here to paint Reduka the Wolf without an airbrush right here. Alright? So get these colors ready and we can begin. So first and foremost, I'll be explaining the overarching process of this. To begin with, we are going to be using an overbrush to replace the airbrush. So if you are already a long time fan and if you are already familiar with overbrushing, why don't you just skip on ahead to the overbrushing chapter to see how I do this. However, if you are new to the channel and do not really know what overbrushing is, overbrushing fundamentally is basically using a large brush which is slightly damp and moving the brush over the entire model to create large swaths and areas of paint on the model. The way how you move your brush determines the texture on the model. Stippling creates a mortar texture, stroking the model creates a brush metal look, and cross-hatching creates some different textures. But wait, isn't this just dry brushing? WRONG! Dry brushing fundamentally uses drier pigments to pick out some of the edge highlights and details. It only focuses on the sharp edges. But didn't I mention that over brushing you need to use a slightly damp brush? Yes, this is why dry brushing creates this very dusty finish because the pigments do not flow off the brush smoothly. Hence, the texture effect without looking too chalky or dusty. Because over brushing uses a damp brush, the paints flow off the bristles a lot easier, hence creating large swaths of texture. So if you want to learn more about overbrushing, why not just check on the overbrushing video? Links will be in the show notes below. Okay, so now with overbrushing out of the way, we're going to talk about the general process. After overbrushing, we're going to do some contrast paints. You guys really like how I've done the contrast paints, and we're going to do exactly the same thing for Reduka the Wolf. After contrast paints, we're going to layer up, pick on some key features to work on and we'll move on to the details where we'll finish up the model in the most gratifying way possible. So we're going to dive straight into overbrushing Reduka the Wolf. For this stage, you're going to need these colors right here. Get them ready. Okay, just a few colors. And we're going to start overbrushing Reduka the Wolf right now. Alright, so with Reduka Prime Black, I'm going to do a wash right now. So this wash is currently just to cover the area that is influenced by the red light. Currently what I'm using is, I'm going to be using a very thin down version of Mephiston Red to wash the area where light is being affected. Okay, so some of these areas are like the undersides of the wolf heads, the sword, the ground and the wolf tail on the right hand side of the model okay then now we're going to do my favorite stage overbrush i'm going to be overbrushing the entire left side of the model in a directional manner i'm going to be using evil sun scarlet from games workshop to do this step at this point of time we want to do this pretty liberally to create an area of influence that is even stronger than the previous step so do this over several thin layers and gently what you want to do is overbrush from the bottom up so that you can create this light effect and catch on some areas just like how an airbrush would have done it okay so this is the result of the red overbrush and now leaving a little bit of black i'm going to be using blue model color dark gray to overbrush the other side 
okay? At this point of time, I want to bring your attention to the details because overbrushing is quite a manual process. You don't want to overdo and break a lot of the details. Do this very gently so that you don't break the details. Now gradually adding in some raw colors white. I'm overbrushing the light source from the top right hand corner to create this black, white and red sketch that we have done for all the other stages. I know you guys have been wanting to do a no airbrush tutorial but because there's no airbrush, this stage has to be really done well to emulate that airbrush. I'll gradually just add in more and more white to create gradual layers to build up the volumetric highlight. As you can see the values are starting to build up and there are areas that you can't reach such as the face so just try your best. If not, we'll do this manually with a sharp brush later on. So now we're still on wall colors white. Just gradually adding in more wall colors white until the value sketch is done. If you need more details about how overbrushing is done, why not check out the overbrushing video? Links will be in the description below. So now that we are done with overbrushing, we're going to swap this out to our synthetic squirrel hairbrush. So our synthetic squirrel hairbrush is a size 4. It has less springiness than the Kolinsky brushes, hence leaving less brush strokes. What we're going to do right here, we're going to use contrast paints so that we get Reduka's base coat and shading done. As usual, I'm going to be thinning down my paints, 3 drops of thinner to 1 drop of paint. So remember while doing contrast, this is a really good tip. Remember to overload the model and clean it up later. That will cause less tight marks. Then you have multiple applications of the same color. For this stage, you are going to need these contrast paints right here. Let's get these contrast paints ready and let's get contrasting on Reduka the Wolf right now. So we're going to start with the contrast stage right now. Currently what I'm using is I'm using a thinned down version of Basilicarium Grey. So as usual, I've been doing the normal ratio of 3 drops of contrast medium to 1 drop of paint and I'm building this gradually. As you can see, the overbrush has left some brush marks. We want to make sure that you do this gradually to sort of glaze down the surfaces to smoothen out the brush marks that have been created. While smoothness is definitely not the strength of overbrushing, we got to make sure that this model looks as smooth as possible so that this rendering of Reduka will look good on the tabletop as well as photographs. I'm deliberately adding more contrast on one side of the wolf head to ensure that the volumetric highlights are done correctly. Moving on, I'm using the standard Soap Light Tutorial color scheme for his skin. I'm currently using a thinned down version of Ultramarine Blue to tint his skin slightly blue and to make it colder. So moving on for the head, I'm using a thinned down version of Gore Grunter fur on the emblem on his big furry head. Alright, so this wolf emblem will be sort of like a copper color. And I'm using Skeleton Hot straight from the bottle onto his furry hat right here. Focusing more on the top just to create some color gradation. I'm also going to be using Skeleton Hot for all the gold parts such as the handle of the knife, the hilt, etc. And right here, I'm using a thinned down version of Black Templar to paint in his black goatee. I'm using a thinned down version of Vulcan Green right here. So I want to make sure that the contrast between the shadow and the light side is different. So I'm trying to add more greens into the cooler shadows so that they can contrast against the warm red that we have done previously. So as you can see, all the fur texture is being shown after this wash stage. 
So now that the contrast stage is done, we are going to move on to layering. We're going to switch up the brush to our large layering brush. It is currently a prototype and you're going to learn a lot more about that in just a little bit. So at this point of time, Raduka the Wolf is a really really large and imposing model. If you are happy with the contrast stage, you can actually call it a day and I would say that this is a pretty good tabletop quality. However, we are going to take Raduka the Wolf to the next level. So let's get layering right now by preparing these colors right here. Get them ready and we can begin layering right now. Alright, now we're going to start on the layering stage. I'm currently mixing in some Scale 75 Basic Flash with the Ultramarine Blue Contrast Paint and this gives this very pale, necrotic looking skin for Raduka. I want to make sure that his skin is sort of like deoxygenated and if you want to see more about Soul Blight skin, why not check out the Soul Blight skin tutorial I produced previously. So moving on, what we're going to do is to fill in the scar details on the wolf heads. So I'm currently painting in the scars using Games Workshop Mephiston Red. So onto the gold surfaces, I'm going to be using the same recipe that I did on Deck Knight Holden Stock. Basically, after this contrast stage, I'm going to be moving to Blue Model Color Green Brown to create the mid-tones. And as I mentioned, for metallic surfaces, make these surfaces slightly larger so you got space to highlight subsequently. Now moving on to the head, I'm going to be adding in Vallejo Model Color Pale Grey Blue as a highlight. This also serves to cool down the color temperature on the head. Because I found that the head is a little bit too saturated and warm, I felt that it should be more desaturated to follow the box art. Now we're going to move on to the details of Reduka. I'm really going to be focusing on his face and really defining up the fur. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to be doing some subtle temperature changes. I'm going to make sure that the side facing the red tends to have red shadows and the side facing away from the red light source will have greenish shadows to portray this color temperature gradient. I'm also going to add some really strong highlights on the go and you will see why this stage is so gratifying. Just a few simple strokes and the model really starts to pop. So let's get detailing on Reduka the Wolf right now. Alright, now it's time for the most gratifying part. Currently right here, I'm going to be using Vallejo Model Color Pale Sand to build the really extreme highlights on the non-metallic metal surfaces. Right here you can see, just with a few simple strokes of highlights, you can see the form and the metal really shining through already. This is why I feel this is very very gratifying. Just adding on a little bit of pure white here, you can see creating the very strong shines on the metallic armor of Raduka the Wolf. Like how all the colors are subtly showing already. And picking out the little details so you can see every single form on this miniature. Right here, moving on with the pure white, I'm also going to be picking on some volumetric highlights on the wolf's fur. While this might not be on camera, I've also sharpened every single edge of the wolf's fur so that they look perfectly rendered and they are more readable than this wash stage that I've produced. So right here, I'm mixing in a little bit of Vallejo Watercolor Pale Sand into Chocolate Brown from Vallejo Watercolor. I'm going to be using this to highlight and each highlight the ladder. So I'm creating some streaks to create some texture to make this look even more aged. So I've mixed in some Vallejo Model Color Silver Grey along with Evil Sun Scarlet from Games Workshop to create this highlight here. This is the shine from his sword. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create this 
non-metallic metal silver effect but it's being drenched in the red environmental light that we are creating right here. So edge highlighting and spot highlighting are really important steps that you should take into consideration when painting NMM. Now for the final parts, I'm adding in Vallejo Model Color Emerald Red into Games Workshop Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm taking on some extreme highlights for the red area. So this will really showcase the form of the miniature. And just picking off these raised surfaces before the final product. So I hope you found this video useful. As I've shown, it is possible to do this without an airbrush. However, of course, it's a lot more time consuming and the airbrush just saves some time. However, it's not impossible to replicate this effect. So that was the final result for Raduka the Wolf, the big bad of Ufen Khan. I can't wait to encounter him in Curse City and hope you guys get to use this tutorial really soon. Why don't you tag me on Instagram? I love to give you some feedback. And if you want to support the channel, why not give me a like and subscribe because it keeps the lights on this studio on and keeps me producing videos like this. To directly support me or the channel, you can head on to our Patreon and become a Patreon today. Just a simple donation will keep all our lights on and you get a whole slew of painting content which I've been doing for the past year. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end and I hope to see you in the next Curse City painting video. See you.